When I was somewhere between 8 and 10 years old, my friend and I thought that it would be a good idea to watch clips of horror movies on YouTube. YouTube was still fairly new back then, but the backlog of movie clips was large enough to convince you that it had always been there. We watched scenes from Saw, Christine, and It, including a clip of Pennywise basically being like a weeping angel from Doctor Who that I am no longer able to find anywhere, but scared me enough to make me not want to go outside again for several weeks. That was my introduction to horror. I believe that a lot of who I am comes from who I was between the ages of 8 and 12. My love for video games, writing, creating, but not my admiration for horror. Horror. I hate the word. I was very easily scared and just like many people, did not appreciate feeling that way. Even this scene in the fifth Harry Potter movie scared me so much that it gave me nightmares. No, my love for horror came later. And interestingly enough, it's because of video games. More specifically even, YouTube Let's Plays. 2012 and 2013 were the years YouTubers like PewDiePie and Markiplier started getting big playing similar kinds of games. With them, plenty more YouTubers joined the party, but I only recall watching these two run through the seemingly infinite halls of Amnesia the Dark Descent, or fear the static that was Slenderman the Eight Pages. I think the reason I only remember these two is because I still watch them to this day. Their videos on horror games were something new to me, as well as to a lot of other people. They were scary, but because of the jokes and the silliness in between the suspense and the panic, they were fun. I wanted to watch them right as they came out, and then I'd watch them again, laughing more and more with every second either of them got more scared. With the rising popularity of little indie horror games on YouTube at the time, more and more games were being made, often of bad quality, but they were still a great viewing experience. Horror was fun. But was it scary? Several years passed, Five Nights at Freddy's turned the horror side of video games upside down and redefined what it meant for a game to be scary or to just have scares. Games started caring less about atmosphere and unpredictability and more about the right time to throw a loud noise at you. Horror games had become jump scare simulators rather than scary experiences. A great example is this rather new game called Don't Scream, a game mostly made for content creators where you have to walk around a forest for 18 minutes without screaming. The concept is great and works perfectly for content creators who are either massive wimps or overreact to seem like a massive wimp. But watching a few playthroughs of it, I realized it wasn't scary. The atmosphere is amazing. Getting dropped in this near perfect looking forest, so real it gives you goosebumps. It just instantly made you go, oh man, I'm in for a treat here. It makes your skin crawl with every subtle noise you hear. You start to sweat and oh man, this game is scary. But then a jump scare hits, and then another one. Birds quickly flying away in panic, a monster rushing towards you, or any of the other 70 or so other jump scares. It is no longer about the fear of not knowing what to expect. It is no longer about a fear for an unknown monster in an unknown location. It's the fear of getting scared, knowing that any second now something could jump at you. Who cares what that thing is? Cause that's not the thing you're scared of. It's kinda like when someone hides behind a corner to startle you. You'll jump, but then you'll get angry or you'll laugh. You're no longer scared because they are not a danger to you. Now imagine that you're in an abandoned building. You're not sure if your friends are ahead of you or behind you. You're not sure if you and your friends are alone even. Every step you take, every doorway you enter, it's eating away at you. Like, what if you go around the corner and someone's there? What if you see or hear someone move? Or worse, what if it's not someone, but something? Something not human. Now that, that is scary. It's what made the movie Bird Box so much scarier than if it had shown you what monster you couldn't look at. Or a quiet place until it showed you the monster. But even with that one, it's not about the jump scares. It's about a fear of what could happen. It's basically what makes Talk To Me a good movie and Smile a bad movie. But do horror games still do any of this? Or are they all just there to start on you? Honestly, it depends on the games you play. If we're being honest, the majority of horror games are all about jump scares nowadays, and that's okay by the way. People love them, they make for great YouTube content, and they're usually quick, fun experiences. But yeah, they do still make 
proper horror games, so to speak. Well, a little on the other side, I suppose. Outlast comes to mind, for example, where my biggest fear was getting found or getting caught. Or Alien Isolation, another example of fearing to be found. A monster so big and so terrifying, but never around to scare you. Actually, that's what makes it so scary. The monster is always around, but it isn't. You don't see it most of the game. It could be anywhere, at any time, and you just have to make sure that it can see you when it's close by. Same with Resident Evil 7. Apart from being disgusting in many ways, thus already making you incredibly uncomfortable, the feeling of constantly being hunted or not knowing what's to come is dreadful. But one of my favorite most recent example of a good horror game experience is probably Iron Lung. It manages to scare players without showing them what they should be afraid of. You're stuck in a tiny room with nowhere to go apart from moving your submarine through an ocean of blood, an already concerning situation to find yourself in, especially since you cannot decide to leave. You hear noises, discomforting noises, and you know things are wrong and that you are in danger. And even though you're not actually there, there's a certain rush, a certain need to make sure you stay safe, that you don't find out what it is that is lurking nearby, watching every move you make. It's a short game and it's not particularly groundbreaking gameplay, but if you can unlock an entirely new fear for your players, I think you've done a great job. So yes, horror games are still scary, but unfortunately the majority isn't. Actually scary experiences don't sell as well as jump scares do. I would love to see more games like Iron Lung or PT or Resident Evil, and I know that there are great indie developers out there trying exactly that, but it'll be hard for them to stand out among the many games that are just out to give you a quick scare. I just know that I'll be looking forward to being scared to my core by whatever horror game finds the next great way to build a proper horror atmosphere. Or maybe I should just try to make my own. Alright, thanks for watching, subscribe, see you next time.